Hey everyone, what's up? I'm here with my friend Marie. Hey booze, what a do? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. With everything going on, I just thought- We should talk about it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's good, get it out there. I feel like it, everything going on creates a discussion. I'm so happy and proud to even want to be part of it. A little ally, I love it. <laughs> I don't even know how to feel as a white person. I'm like, this is like what I should be doing. No, I it's not agree. Sound like a pat on the back, but thank you. I agree. I just feel like a lot of white people that I do know don't do it, mm -hmm. you know, or like don't speak up or don't say it. Protests are going on and stuff, but I feel like in everyday life, like not gonna make a video about it or something like that. So I feel like it's good. And I feel like a lot of white people just don't know. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it is good to talk about it. Like things aren't gonna change if you don't talk about it, even if it's awkward or uncomfortable, like it definitely gets better. Yeah. You know? And like with white people, <laughs> We're literally just diving in. But like, I feel like a lot of white yes. people, including myself, well, I used to be more like this. You don't say anything because one, you don't want to say something offensive by mm -hmm. accident. Like I was always scared to say the word black. Where do you think that came from? Like, when did it start? I think it goes back because like when you read like what people said in history, that's yeah. like offensive. It goes with like Negro and all that stuff. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know what the f to be saying now. Yeah. And then people start saying African-American. And I feel mixed. like growing up black and seeing that like it just feels so bad because it makes you feel like what you are is like a bad word mm -hmm. like whenever I was called African-American I was just like what the f but it's just like no black person says that yeah you know like I would never say like oh I'm African-American or like I would never call like another black person that like I would just be like you're black like just like how you wouldn't really be like I'm Caucasian right and it just made it feel like saying black was like not something you should say or like something you should be ashamed of especially we did go to the same high school it was really white over there and I just feel like that like it felt so uncomfortable even my history teachers wouldn't want to say the word black and I'm like why like I love being black like I want to say it scream it shout it but I feel like from other people it feels like you shouldn't I don't know why you shouldn't say that like it's I don't know because I feel like in history it was always used I don't know in a bad way yeah but then african-american I didn't know could be offensive because just because you're black doesn't mean you're african-american yeah, no, you could literally. literally be from anywhere else yeah I'm like me myself and I like I'm black and Swedish so mm -hmm. like you can be different things and like just to group that and just say that like I feel like black is just like a little bit more like real right and like I feel like if you are like if you're around black people or you talk to black people like you're gonna understand like most of us I think would prefer to be called black right you know right and like it's not offensive it's not a bad word or anything like it's just literally what we are it's just what you are if <laughs> you I was know? like I'm mixed with like a bunch of f and shit yeah. <laughs> like let's go into it also I feel like it's always okay like if you ever are uncomfortable or awkward like it's okay you can ask somebody like is this offensive to mm -hmm. you like I feel like it shows people like okay you care mm -hmm. like even if you're gonna up like at least you care oh do you have to bleep me no you're fine <laughs> okay. i cuss all the time it just shows that you care like even like with the lgbtq plus ia what is it i don't even fucking know <laughs> <laughs> like i have to ask questions because a lot of the times like i'm not sure if i'm using right pronouns or anything mm -hmm. and i feel like every time i do that like people are like thank you so much like i appreciate you for even asking right. because so many people don't even ask so like that's how i feel when white people do ask me something about black issues i'm like thank you for even caring and like really trying to go out of your way and maybe have an uncomfortable conversation just so you can try to be considerate to me and like what it's like to be black in America. Right. What really annoyed me is I woke up on Instagram and Instagram annoys me but like I woke up to the black boxes mm -hmm. and I've never felt like such <laughs> because of the sh trip. I was just like what the f are these black boxes and like do you really think that's doing anything yeah. and it gave me the most irrational anger and then i didn't know if i was in the wrong yeah because i was seeing like my friends posting it and i was like i thought everyone like knew better than this because like what the f does that do no yeah and i don't know i think it was supposed to be blackout tuesday and then everyone started hashtagging black lives right. matter so then when you would go there everything was gone right so i'm like but one i don't even know who started that like i'm right. like was that a black person no or... it wasn't it was yeah. had nothing to do with the movement that's why i'm like i don't even know what that was right. but i think sometimes on social media things just get picked up and you don't want to seem like you're not participating or helping because mm -hmm. like i did the blackout square yeah i literally was it. like yeah i was like is this helping or hurting right. and then later when i look at the fucking black lives matter tag and i'm like oh shit i'm like here we go fuck yeah and people are like i need to be silent to like let black people speak and i'm like thank you for your fucking service yeah no like <laughs> Thank you. Let's have the white people not talk <laughs> about an issue that they're the ones who need to like change. Literally, and I feel like that's a big topic that's been going around and I agree with that a lot. Like, I don't think it's the duty or responsibility of black people to be educating everyone. Even mm -hmm. if you have questions, okay, yeah, sure. Like, if you're friends with black people and you want to ask a question, don't hesitate to ask a question, but I don't really think it's our duty to educate mm -hmm. everybody about what has happened. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I think that's something like if you live in America, if you are a human being with like a heart and a 
being so yeah. like just check in you yeah. know like because it is hard I think it's yeah hard and it's fun. like not your job to also then comfort the white person yeah and like try to make you feel better it's uncomfortable and it's like i didn't personally do anything yeah exactly but it's my job to educate myself further i mean that's really what college did just like documentaries like 13th that was the yeah. first thing that really opened my eyes which everyone should watch but i remember seeing when that in school like three years ago yeah and i was like amazing. damn like <laughs> You think prison's like a good thing? Like, oh, we're locking up criminals. So before you saw that, like, did you did you think? What did you think before you saw about that? prison? Yeah, I didn't realize like people are just fucking easily targeted and, and thrown did, in there. Okay, yeah. So that was that's my question. Like, because I know obviously if you're not around a lot of black people, mm -hmm. you're not gonna have the best experience knowing everything about it. So before watching that documentary, like, did you think okay, a lot of black people are just like doing bad stuff and getting in jail, right. or were you like the cops are like literally going after them? I just thought all of that, like the whole system was just people were being put in there and if they weren't they were gonna get out yeah and then seeing that I was like oh like our whole society's just set up to purposely like put people of color in that position Literally, yeah the Clintons it up yeah. and then there's just still people trapped in there Literally. for like non-harmless offenses and then weed's legal now it's yes just like, that for me i'm like that is ridiculous i literally have family in jail for selling like minimal amounts of weed and then big huge ass corporations are selling pounds and pounds of weed every day and now it's legal and people are still rotting and sitting in jail yeah. like i'm like this is crazy but then it's a business at the end of the day like they're making money off these people that's like, what also blew my mind it's just like everything's a fucking business i didn't even know like the prison complex was an industry yeah and, and america like, is profiting. the only places the only place that has profit from prisons the only place like starbucks cups yeah Secret, like what literally you there? wouldn't even know yeah. you wouldn't even know and it's insane like that's crazy to me because i guess if you're not around it like you just literally don't know the war on drugs for example like a lot of people think that black people have no other option but to go into like selling drugs or doing things like that but that's really not the case it's like black people and white people alone both do the shit right. like white people sell a bunch of coke right. and like black people sell crack crack cocaine it's a 10 to 1 disparity like crack cocaine if you get caught with that you are gonna get a much higher sentence and a much like harsher punishment than if you're caught selling coke mm -hmm. and the reason behind that was because coke was like mainly found in white communities crack was more in black communities it's like everything has a reason it's like i don't think black people do more crime or things like that i think both parties do it but it's black people get harsher sentences because even white people do a lot of embezzling mm -hmm. and like white collar crimes mm -hmm. but those don't have as harsh punishments as the crimes black people do right so i'm like i just think the whole system is like literally made for black people to fail right and i feel like until that's acknowledged and really recognized and like i feel like unless everybody wants it to change kind of like now like with the protests like everybody's like the shit has to end like it's just kind of too much like right. i feel like this is really good because it's the change that's needed but like i feel like it still needs to keep going like i get it can be like maybe tiresome to see every day or like you're like oh i just want to like have positive thoughts and happy thoughts but like black people don't really get to go and like have happy thoughts at the end of the day like right. it really is fucking hard a lot of people are like think that i'm like whitewashed you mm -hmm. know like shit like that and even me like i went to jail because a white person said that i tried to run her over mm -hmm. which i didn't but all she did was point at me say it and they took me to jail and i sat in there for like a fucking day what and was that? Um, maybe like a year and a half ago it was at csun Oh wait, I kind of remember this. You yeah. were telling me. In I was the in the lot, car. Right? Yeah, I was in the car with my boyfriend at the time, and I was just like, how I'm talking now. I cuss when I talk, mm -hmm. and I was cussing, and a white girl walked by, and she said, "Why are black people always so angry and cussing?" And I was like, "Bitch, what?" Yeah, like, are I cuss you every other. Word. Me too. <laughs> I was like, "Are you talking to me?" And she was like, "Yeah, I am." And then she kicked my car. So then I got out of my car, and this, that was my fault. I yeah. got out of my car, and, like, we did get into an altercation. But then when the cops came, she said she tried to run me over. So the cops didn't ask me any, like five miles per in hour. a parking yeah. lot. I'm like, bitch, if I wanted to run you over, it would have happened. We're in a parking lot. Right. right. Then they take me to jail. They don't ask me shit else. They have me sitting in a fucking hot car for 100 in 100-degree 100 weather, like, 20 minutes as they're talking to her in the shade. Mm -hmm. They leave my car sitting there. My car gets a ticket and shit everything i go to jail my dad was able to bail me out a lot of people don't get that position like a lot of people sit in there until their court date my court date was like a month and a half from when it happened i think that's also like another huge point even if you didn't do the crime yeah and you can't afford to get out on bail you're still just rotting you're away sitting, sitting there. in there you're sitting in there and then the day of my court date at my court date my time is at 8 a.m i get a call at 7 like 54 53 and it's a private investigator saying hey 
sorry, we finally just got around to checking the cameras. We see you didn't try to run her over, so the whole case is dismissed. But I still had to pay bail to get out of jail. Mm -hmm. I still was hired a lawyer for my f***ing court date. Like, right. all this shit. And I'm just like, thank God there was a camera that happened at CSUN. But so many people don't have a camera. Exactly. And like, if there was no camera there, I would have a felony charge on my record for attempted assault with a deadly weapon just because she literally went like she tried to run me over. Yeah. And they didn't even ask me, they didn't try to get my story, they were just like, you're going to jail. She was like, sorry, like, there's nothing I can do, like, you're going to jail. It's so f up. Yeah, and then that just really, like, from that point on, that really made me think, like, what the f like, how many people don't have a camera? Mm -hmm. Or, like, don't have this, like, this exact same situation happen. Even one of my friends at CSUN, he was jaywalking, mm -hmm. and then a cop arrested him and sent him to jail because, they started arguing, whatever. The cop was like, you're being aggressive, mm -hmm. arrested him. And he went on a Friday. If you go on a Friday, you have to wait until Monday. Like, you're stuck in there. They don't handle any of that shit on the weekend. So if you go in on Friday, you're stuck there. So for f***ing jaywalking, he was in there from Friday to Monday. And then had to pay bail on Monday to get out. For jaywalking. I'm like, I don't That would even... never happen to a white person. No, ever. like, it doesn't. And I feel like black people are just seen as so aggressive. And to me, sometimes I just don't get why. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just don't understand it. Like, when I see black people, like, I think black people are pretty loving. Because mm -hmm. I think if a lot of the stuff that has happened to black people happened to white people, white people would react a lot differently. Yeah, more entitled. For yeah, sure. and I even saw a quote that was like, America's really lucky. Black people just want equality and not revenge. Like, we're literally just asking for our rights we just don't want our black men and fathers to be killed like senselessly and consistently like it literally tears apart our families and communities and then we're being joked at by white people that we don't have our dads and it's like well they're sitting in jail because the system's set up like that right. you know and then I just feel like it's a whole cycle a whole traumatic awful cycle and then the whole time the majority of the population is like well racism doesn't even exist what are you complaining about mm -hmm. they're like do better get a better job mm -hmm. get out of the neighborhood mm -hmm. even. but it's like it's not the neighborhood it doesn't matter if you're like whitewashed or like hood as f like it doesn't really matter what type of black you are like i feel like when it comes down to it in our justice system like the, it's like you're just one black and you're aggressive and you're seen as like just kind of like a detriment to society mm -hmm. and like it kind of sucks to have that feeling hanging around it like definitely takes a toll i just saw this on twitter twitter's like where i go for all the news because you can't trust shit anymore yeah like no seriously. one caters to republicans one to democrats like there's everything so biased so i like to just get my information from the literal source who's at like rallies and shit <laughs> like who is there actually beating up who literally like when i went to the protest it was so like, peaceful i see all the videos i'm like this shit looks scary yeah, and I like was scared to go for the police, not because of same looting and Literally. like all this other bullshit. But then when you're there, like it's it's like the like everyone there is so together. Like the protest for me was such a moving experience. Like I went like three times. Never in my life have I seen so many non-black people go so hard for black mm -hmm. people. Like I saw so many white people with Black Lives Matter posters and like literally chanting these racist cops like mm -hmm. i've never seen that and even i saw like one cop like try to say something to a black guy and a white person stepped in front and i was like oh my god like i've never seen this shit me and my friend were there he's black too and we were just looking around like in awe like I've literally never seen that. That's how I felt, and I was like kind of uncomfortable because I was like, should I be like happy? Like, should this be like? Because it's know. not over a happy thing, but no. it's like it was beautiful to see yeah. so many different races coming together for the same cause. No, yeah, not racist races. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was definitely hard because it is like a lot of people were mourning the mm -hmm. death of people, and like it is a tragic time and like definitely really sad. But I think that was like kind of the silver lining to right. it. Like, okay, this is really sad, but look how many people the whole world is doing never have we had protests like this like the entire world and that just made me feel amazing because i was like okay like we're seen and i just always feel especially like if i'm in a white community or like just m like a more white dominated area i feel being black like you're just not really seen or heard mm -hmm. so that i was like oh my god like people are seeing like our people are getting killed senselessly like literally people are just laying on our neck and we're screaming, I can't breathe, like calling out for, like George Floyd, literally calling out for his mom. Like, that's heartbreaking. I, I have not even watched that video. I can't watch that video. Like, but I'm just like that to me, the silver lining of that was everybody coming together. Mm -hmm. I saw everyone holding Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's insane. Like I, I, oh my God, it was moving. I definitely love that. Like I was so happy I could be a part of it. And like even alive in this time. Like, mm -hmm. 
that was beautiful. To and me. like, thank God for social media, even though it is used a lot of the time for yeah. just like stupid shit. But like, that's the only way this, any of this has been captured. Like, no, to literally. actually prove and like to see things actually taking action for once. Literally. This was like the first time I was like, this isn't something I can just like be quiet about, which is also white privilege. It's just like, you can just shut the fuck up over yeah. things. And that's what a lot of people do is because they don't want to offend anyone. And yeah. it's like, I'd rather say something wrong and be corrected than just like sit in my ignorance because exactly. that's the only way to learn. On Twitter, I saw like MLK photos and yeah. like from the civil rights movement and they were in color. And I was like, what the f in history books, they're black and white. And yeah. they do that to make you think it's just so long ago. Yeah. And like being in a white neighborhood and just like growing up white, it's just like you think, like you know there's still racism, but it's just not what you think it's anything like what it used to be. And yeah. it's like, it's just so prominent still. And like there's still obviously so much work that has to be done. And I don't even know why it's up for fucking debate. It's yeah. like fucking human right, not Exactly. Like, the fact that Black Lives Matter is a controversial statement, like, yeah. to me, blows my fucking mind. Because to me, I'm like, not only do Black Lives Matter, like, Black Lives are needed. Black Lives literally built this fucking country. Right. Like, Black Lives are the reason half the shit is the way it is. Mm -hmm. So the minimal thing would be to me that they matter. So the fact that that's even up for debate, I'm like, that's so disrespectful. Like, it's infuriating. Like, yeah. saying Black Lives Matter shouldn't mean no other lives matter. Mm -hmm. Like, when people say all lives matter, blue lives matter, like, no one saying they don't but we have to say black lives do because they are constantly being targeted right like, all lives aren't constantly being targeted right or you that would have been a discussion prior to black lives matter right so to me that whole discussion i'm just like oh my god like i don't even know why it's a debate you know yeah so if you think of like mass shootings like the vegas one they go vegas strong it's not like bro, like all cities strong exactly like, shut the f up. like clearly one thing person city needs a little extra help right. because it's something happened some of my white friends tell me like they do say like sometimes they don't want to speak on black issues because they feel awkward like they're saying something that it's not their place mm -hmm. but i'm like it's everyone's place to speak on injustice i mm -hmm. feel like if we have a justice system in this country then i think it's everyone's place to speak up when shit is like going terribly wrong right you know she came to my high school that's predominantly white how many black kids would you say there even were Four. Yeah. Were Literally you, like, four. Included? Yeah, me and my sister too. She was a twin sister. And then there was like one black guy and one other black girl, but the black girl was only there for like two years. And I remember my first day at La Cunada, this girl came up to me and I think I was how old are you in what grade, ninth grade? grade? 14. Like 15? Yeah, 14, 15. And she, my first day there, she came up to me, didn't say hi. She was just like, oh my God, you're the first black person I've ever met. She says, are you pregnant? I was like, what the fuck? I had to pull my hand back. This is not smack this bitch in the face. But I was like, why would you ask me that? And she said, oh, well, I just heard that a lot of black girls get pregnant really early and like really young. And I was like, what it's the like fuck? It's so horrible. Yeah. And, and I, knowing who you're talking about now, I'm just like, what? Like, and it's insane. Of course, it's like a uh, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Predominantly white areas, it's not an accident it's like that. Like, and it's not because white people work harder, get better jobs. Like, there's literally, you can go in, it's public record. Like, La Cunada is one of the cities known for redlining, mm -hmm. which is another word for segregation. Like, that's why when you go up that little hill and mirrors right there, like, the city drastically changes. Like, it's yeah. literally redlined there. And during that certain time, like, all the black people in that community were pushed out the white people came in all the black people were denied loans mm -hmm. they would say it was because bad credit whatever it was really because of color so even still you see the trickle down effect from a system that did that so long ago mm -hmm. we're still recovering from that like there's still barely any black people in La Cunada. right there's like a few and if there are you it, no ex you know them by name mm -hmm. because it's so few like, like you're like a spectacle it's yeah like, oh, you're the black girl yeah. like, i remember when you went to the school dance with like yeah. And I remember it being like almost like a big deal. Yeah, like literally the black girl. Or I would always get so much, you're so pretty for a black girl. And I'm like, that's not a compliment. Yeah. Like that's not even close to a compliment. Like I'm just pretty. Yeah. Like period. Stunning. Like, <laughs> like I remember seeing it and I was like, that girl is so beautiful. Like, I love you. Thank but, you. And then also just like the personality, like you have the best personality. That's why I like wanted to be your friend. Like because you're so <laughs> And funny and then even if you have resting bitch face like i, I do know. too but it's like literally i do those people have like a past yeah. and like they're tough but like i'm very nice when you talk to me yeah you know? like if you talk to me but i guess maybe i do have a little bit of a resting bitch face but i'm like it's just my face right like, it's literally resting bitch face like a lot of us have it but i do feel like when 
black girls have it like it's definitely seen as a little more and then also I felt at La Cunata, like because I was black everyone thought I was like so sexual mm -hmm. all the time like if a white girl did something or kissed a boy or whatever it was seen as like oh innocent but like if I did it it was like oh my god this fucking slut like yeah. feel like black women are so sexualized right. and like fetishized and mm -hmm. like I like there's just so many things in this country but you know one step at a time. So the yeah. fact that all this is happening and being talked about with pr police brutality, I'm definitely happy about, but I think there's so much more work to be right. done. And I definitely think it starts with conversations like this though. People need to just fucking talk. But it's hard to talk to when you're in a predominantly white community right. and you don't have access to a lot of black mm -hmm. people. So I'm like, I think it definitely takes coming out of a comfort zone and like meeting new people or going to new places that maybe you thought previously were scary or like maybe you weren't used to. But when you do get in those areas, like you just realize, okay, like we're all, we're literally all people. Right. That's like why I was so grateful for like even where we went to school after because it yeah. was just like so diverse and I just didn't want to even do the whole college experience and like really like be like out of school, out of the state. Like it just Same. like wasn't for me. I just didn't even want to be at school. Yeah. I just like was like, let's just commute this shit. Yeah, literally like. Like, I was never on yeah. campus. I and was I was like, just, like, shocked. I was just like, shit. There's, there's just so much to learn. And yeah. it's like, anyone can learn it. Even if you go to a, another all-white school. It's yeah. like, take it upon... I hope at other schools, they teach the same type of shit. But, yeah. like, there's just so many resources now for you to educate yourself. And it's... I don't understand, like, half the fucking stereotypes. Black yeah. people are, like, honestly, the most loving, comforting... I just swear. Just big personalities. I think so, too. Like, I think black people really, like, have so much love inside them because I don't know how many people could go through what we have been through mm -hmm. and really still, like, have love in their hearts. Right. And just not be filled with so much hate. That's why I'm, like, I have so much respect and admiration for my people. Like, I love being, like, I love being black. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always hated, like, when people wouldn't want to say black. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, it's a good word. Like, right. it's probably one of the best words. No, I'm kidding. That's my opinion. But I'm just like, it's a good word. Like, yeah. You don't need to treat it like a bad word. You right. know? And even at La Cunata, I remember in the fucking history book, it McGraw-Hill, still to this fucking day, says, like, Christopher Columbus discovered America. Right. It literally doesn't touch on, like, any of the civil rights movements. Right. It touches on Martin Luther King for maybe half a page and that's it like that's all we get i feel like that's all People we get love in to quote martin luther yeah. and claim i'm like still we not have racist. So, exactly and i'm like there's so many other things that happens and they don't talk about the black wall street mm -hmm. literally that white people looted and destroyed it like so many things are left out of our history and it's like unless we go digging and searching for it we don't get it and i feel like you know i'm very into like spirituality like energies everything and i feel like a lot of people don't understand how lost and confused you can feel when you don't know where you came from right like so many people can track back like their families they know who was who a fucking farmer whatever like so many black people don't even know mm -hmm. because we were literally taken from our country women were raped killed everything like men killed tortured everything like we don't we don't know our history mm -hmm. and that's so hard to know where you're going when you don't even know where you came from right. you know right like it just creates kind of sometimes like a feeling of like uneasiness mm -hmm. and i feel like a lot of people sometimes don't get where that comes from or maybe like why black people are angry sometimes but it's a lot to carry internally right. like that's like i feel a lot of trauma like we don't know a lot about ourselves mm -hmm. so it's like we're in this world and we're trying to discover and find and make our ourselves and the whole time we do it the whole world is like basically telling us so many negative things about ourselves that we're not going to make it succeed everything so it's just really heavy i mm -hmm. feel like you know i've experienced like my fair share of like bullying and feeling like just like an outsider and mm -hmm. i still feel that way in a lot of situations like yeah. where i'm just uncomfortable around like straight men yeah for being gay so yeah. it's like if i can feel that like i can't even imagine what a black person feels like or a black woman or a black gay guy yeah. you know like there's even more things and like you're a woman so then yeah. you have to take on misogyny literally and just all this shit and it's just like so fucking unfair yeah and like white cis men just will never understand especially without like fully educating but like you aren't impressed in any way yeah so there's not even a way for you to really have a clue of what that feels like exactly and even when you said like white men will never know my boyfriend that i did date in high school he wasn't white but like pretty much basically yeah, yeah. <laughs> his family literally hated me hated me and i could never understand why and they wouldn't let me in their house they would call me a slut his sisters would talk about me his mom was the reason my dad lost clients and work people in la Cunata. like it was just crazy and then it finally came down to it and i'm like it's because i'm black mm -hmm. like there's no other reason i'm not doing anything different than right. a normal 15 year old girl right like yeah i 
my boyfriend. Yeah. Like, of course I did. Like, yeah. we all, like, I'm just like, it's ridiculous, but I feel like when you are black, like, when you do something, it, it like, you're punished or demonized so much more. Mm -hmm. You know? So, and then growing up, like, who the f like being 15? No one. Or 16. Like, it's literally the <laughs> yeah. most awkward time. You know, you don't even like yourself. Like, it's so f hard so to have to grow up and I'm sure you can understand too because you're gay like mm -hmm. you know you have to f literally go in a time where you're trying to figure everything out and then half the world like hates you right and <laughs> yeah. like I'm just trying to live like I'm literally just trying to be happy yeah you know? and the biggest issue which I still struggle with is just no matter how many people say they're accepting because like you can still have a facade that uh, equality I don't care you and know so many people do that like yeah. deep down everyone still has their prejudices exactly. like that's just a fact everyone regardless as much as you want to say you have no like anything against anyone like it's like everyone's does. prejudice yeah. like if you go to the museum of tolerance you have to go through the prejudice store yeah i don't know i can never like develop a comfortable relationship with a straight guy because it's just like of all the bad ones i've had like yeah. in middle school that are just like so triggering where it's like even you just walking anywhere you are always thinking, like what are this white guys are racist yeah you know but then also i feel like there's such a need for men in our society to be so hyper masculine mm -hmm. so straight guys when they're around a gay guy they're like they automatically think like okay like i can't do this because i need to be so masculine right. or the gay guy's hitting on me when it's like half the time these just don't even want you. Mm -hmm. They're probably not even your type. Right. Like, you're just trying to be a friend, but I feel like... They're always the butt ugly one. <laughs> literally, <laughs> who are like, you're coming after me. Like, don't nobody want you. Shut up. Literally. <laughs> like, you're so fucking gross. <laughs> I always say, like, if you're gonna be a fucking asshole, you better just be fucking hot. You first. have to. You better be fucking perfect. Literally. If you're gonna think that, if you're gonna act like that, please be perfect so that when you irritate the f*** out of me, I have something cute to look at. Exactly. If I'm looking at trash, right. I'm just like, what, what? I don't even give a fuck to even like listen. This? Yeah. I'm just like, ew. <laughs> Toodles, bitch. <laughs> like, cancel culture. Okay, let's Great talk topic about it. because let's talk about it's just it. like everything on social media. Mm -hmm. Just like, if you have anything on your track record that comes back, which people literally dig and search for. Yeah. Which I think is just so unfair. People say horrible shit at a young age. Like, yeah. Like, I've said shit I'm not proud of. Yeah. That you say to either for shock value to literally. your friends that you don't mean. I'm not stupid enough to have posted anything online. Oh <laughs> like, God. I don't know how people do that, but. Literally, yeah. Like, like why? It you, stays there forever. Like, are you gonna make a Facebook <laughs> status? Like, <laughs> Why is that even going on Facebook in the fucking first place? But, Literally. Well, People are going to dig up your past now. <laughs> yeah. It's probably just me talking about, like, Ariana Grande. I'm like a loser. <laughs> Or like Club Penguin. <laughs> but like if people find anything, no matter like what you're like now, it's like yeah. you still get shit on it. And it's like people can grow because my beliefs changed so much in two years. Yeah. Like even though I wasn't racist, it's like just the way I view everything now is so much more different. And it's like, how do you expect people to change if you're just going to automatically cancel them before they even have a chance to like prove, themselves. prove it? And like even if they are currently proving it, it's like, okay, so now you're just going to like take it all away just because yeah. it's something they said 10 years ago. But I do get it to a certain extent because I'm like, I, I think a lot of people like when they follow people on social media mm -hmm. and stuff they want to see like okay is that really you it's so hard to know who somebody is behind a screen right so i feel like a lot of people do dig just to see like okay like i just want to know the type of person right. you are so when things like that come up i i get to a certain extent like some things being said but when it comes to certain things, I'm like, I kind of do understand cancel culture. Right, right. Because some things I don't think should be forgiven so lightly. Yeah, it totally depends on yeah. like what was said yeah. in the context, the age. There's yeah. people, though, that like are exposed. Like, if you're a kid, I'm like, no. Yeah. Like, okay, like, kids say the dumbest shit. Yeah. Like, if I recorded everything I said as a child, I like, no. Mine wouldn't even be, like, racist. It would just be like, you're a no, fucking yeah, loser. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, that would be, like, <laughs> so rude and just, like, stupid, like yeah. a kid. But I feel like our culture now, it's a very sensitive culture. Right. And I do understand that, but then at the same time, like, that is a lot for, like, somebody who's trying to come into their own or anything, mm -hmm. like, to hear shit like that. Right. I didn't really have an experience like that, that I ever believed that, but I definitely know people that that do that they hear those things and like it really gets them it fucking eats them mm -hmm. like eats them at night like they think about it they sit on there they're like oh my god that's true like even in my community like a lot of like black women that i know like they don't really want to embrace their blackness they'll always straighten their hair they only really hang out with white people like they don't really feel so comfortable being black because they've never been celebrated for it right like, even when you do go out of your way to be black like you're gonna get like you're gonna get criticism mm -hmm. so it's like to be really strong and comfortable being black like you do kind of have to like but like push against some waves so i feel like then to go even further and see people that maybe you follow or look up to or like 
with say racist shit you're just like oh my god like another one and i feel like that's why people go so hard on it mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. like even doja cat like the shit she right. did or whatever it's hard so i feel like cancel culture is kind of a detrimental thing because we don't know the full story yeah but then at the same time i'm like if you did yourself put something out there on the internet you knew it it might have been found. right so i was just filling marie in on like all the vanderpump rules drama yeah, that's happening right now high. so many cast members were just fired for saying ignorant shit yeah a couple years ago because it was focused around like the oscars and when it was really speaking about like the black lives matter movement at that time mm -hmm. which it's never been bigger right now yeah. and like a lot of people are finally understanding the whole point innocent people are being killed every day for no reason Oh um, like Breonna Taylor, like yeah. an innocent woman who's just shot in her bedroom, like horrible. And um, there's like so many stories like that though, I feel like too. Right, like all the time that you don't even hear about. Yeah, and like, people turn to like TV to like escape, but then they're like, I can't escape what's going on. And yeah. it's like, well, that's also a privilege. If people are so sick of hearing it, like imagine just being a black person living it every day with Because it's like the you fear. can't turn it off. Yeah, right. like I get it can seem repetitive or whatever, keep bringing it up, but it's like, it literally just keeps getting brought up because it's still happening I get it's a lot to turn on the TV and see it or whatever see it in on social media but it's like to live it it never ends mm -hmm. it never ends like off camera for a second we were talking about the Trump administration everything like the whole presidential election like like a lot of the people that I went to school with seeing how many of them were supporting Trump really was like eye-opening and I was like damn like I didn't even think that would be like that because for people to be saying make America great again all I can think is the further you go back in history the worse black people are treated mm -hmm. like even when people when you see like movies like the great gatsby and you think about the 1920s being a black person the only thing you kind of think about is like i couldn't be in the movie mm -hmm. like i wouldn't be in the situation like when you talk about like the roaring 20s or whatever like all i could think is like we literally have like no rights mm -hmm. you know like even things like that so when you, i hear make america great again all i hear is take my rights away even more mm -hmm. than they already are being heard or listened to now mm -hmm. so seeing all that was like awful I was just like this is irritating that's why when people say well you can still be friends and have different political like agreements whatever I completely understand that except when you're voting for a racist right because then I'm like I don't feel like you're respecting like who I am I feel like you're not acknowledging like this man is directly putting policies in place that affect me my family my people my friends like my whole community mm -hmm. so to say make America great again I'm like when are you referring to mm -hmm. like slavery segregation Jim Crow like when was it great because right. even right now it's not so great for black people like I feel like it should be let's make America great like collectively like let's make it great together to say again it's like for us it wasn't ever great yet like we're still waiting for that we are still fighting for that every day every generation like that's why we're protesting we are fighting so bad to see the great America that we hear about all the right. time so to say that like that was so infuriating to hear that I'm just like basically it felt like everyone who said that was wanting to walk on the rights of our community you mm -hmm. know like so that was infuriating to me I don't even think of it in that way like the again part yeah like, like damn, when yeah. But literally when was it great for us right. like it was only great for some people like what I didn't even think of that what the like as, yeah. Like, let's go back 10 years. Right. It's already worse. 20, 30, 40. Right. Like, when was it great? Like, literally. Right. I, you want to go back to 1800s? Like, slavery? Yeah, then it's right. literally we're slaves. Just to hear people that I knew saying that, or people that I thought, like. And to you. Yeah. In front of you. Like, literally, I just don't even wear understand the Hat it's in like front so you're of gonna me. be my friend, but yeah, like I can't, I can't even be your friend. I'm, I'm disgusted. Right. Like, I'm ashamed of you. I would never want to walk by somebody and even remotely know them and see them wearing that hat. Oh my gosh, that's like a slap in the face. To right. Me. And then even like sometimes I'll see people of color wearing that, and I'm just like, oh my god, like you, you, can't, you can't love yourself. Like who are you fighting for? Like you're voting for this man who literally doesn't give a fuck about you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, that is ridiculous. Like he only gives a fuck about a certain group. And it's very clear to see. So when I see anybody that I know supporting that, I'm like, you clearly don't care about me and my community, mm -hmm. you know, because I would never vote for somebody that was stepping on a certain people's like rights. Mm -hmm. Like I would just never do that. Like that would not seem right to me. Like even white people, like I don't want white people's rights taken away or stepped on. Like I want it to all be just a fucking 
regular society yeah. like, where we all are treated the same which obviously like this isn't a utopia and it's not a fucking fairy tale like there's right. always going to be some injustices everywhere but when it's directly targeted over and over again at a certain group I just think it takes everybody to say we don't want it mm -hmm. and the fact that the majority of people are like make it great again I'm like that's so hurtful yeah you know? I'm sure you probably allowed this a lot in your life probably even like in high school but like did people like say the n-word in front of you and you just like let it pass or did oh. you give people shit I feel like I remember you kind of giving people shit yeah I, I've, but I know a lot of people let it slide and same thing with like me and like when straight guys say like f*** it or uh, gay and like yeah. I mean, no one's saying it to me but like probably shouldn't like allow people to say it and... but I feel like the like the one reason why people don't speak on it is because you don't want to make an issue and you don't right. want to be awkward and you don't mm -hmm. want to be that person when I was at La Cunada, I remember at first I would get on everybody mm -hmm. and I would be like don't say that shit da 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 and then I was just like I'm saying it to every f Right. Like, I'm literally getting myself mad so I would just be like okay this is where I'm at high school right now like this isn't how it's been my whole life this isn't how it's gonna be after this like I just kind of have to get through it but I fucking hated it and then if I ever would bring up like hey I don't like you like don't use that word in front of me I don't appreciate it. I don't like it like people would always be like why like, it's not your word, this and that, like, mm -hmm. and I just didn't get it. Like, it's I, not your word. And I didn't get it's not why. Your word. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't even get why it's so, why people want to say it so much. Yeah, I don't get why people just can't give up certain fucking words. Yeah, like, there's certain words I don't say just right. out of respect for people and not even out of respect. It's like, it doesn't, it's not even that serious. Yeah. But at first, I did definitely fight it a lot, and then I felt like I was just arguing all the time, and then I was seen even more. When you're black and you do that, and you're in a predominantly white place, you're automatically seen as angry black person so now i'm seen as having an attitude mm -hmm. i pop off easily shit like that so i'm just like let me fucking get through high school because high school is just awful enough as it is like it's awful. also a woman so then literally. misogynist you go and she's a bitch yeah literally <laughs> so it's just like like an angry black win. bitch yeah. literally everyone should be checking your friends and i'm gonna start doing it even yeah. just like for words that you know about gays just like yeah because it's like no one should be even saying those words i mean i like to say it but yeah. it's like just the way you have the right to say it. Yeah. I have the right to exactly. say my words. Yeah. But other people where it doesn't affect you, you have no like reason to be saying it. No, and I completely agree with that. Like I'm a black woman, I date black men, and in the black community, like I do feel like there is kind of a discrepancy with the black community and the gay community, especially towards black gay people. So like a lot of the guys that I have dated, like, will say like the F word, like mm -hmm. really discrim like like things that I don't agree with and I will always be like your brother's you, gay, gay. Right? yeah like literally I'm like you cannot say that shit around me but even if my brother wasn't gay like you cannot like yeah. don't do that like I have like so much love for the gay community like so much pride like mm -hmm. I think it takes so much to even come out I have so much admiration because I'm like you are lit and like you have you have to be strong mm -hmm. to do that you're like you're gonna face shit mm -hmm. you're gonna get criticism like and you're you're choosing to do that mm -hmm. and I'm like that to me is so strong so beautiful so when anyone around me ever says anything like that, like I have to check them. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who the f are you? Like you have no right to even say that. And like it obviously too, like my brother is like, that's my family. Right. Like that's my, like one of my best friends. Like, so if anyone ever says that, like I automatically feel like you're insulting my family, mm -hmm. which is an extension of me. So now I'm like, you're f***ing insulting me. Right. Like I don't care. And then people will be like, well, you're not gay. Da 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 da. And I'm like, well, I've had my moments. Right, right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But it's all on a spectrum. Yeah, yeah, you know, literally me. It's a f***ing <laughs> spectrum. But your words are your words. Mm -hmm. Like, certain people have their words. You know, Take let the them word have back. it. Yeah. Literally. Like, straight guys should not be calling women bitches. No. It's my favorite word, but... Um, yeah, but... Use it in a f***ing derogatory never. way. And men will never be able to use it in a non... Like, I can't imagine a straight guy just being like, hey, bitch. No. No, it's I like can't. not I would be like, place. what? Like, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, are you coming yeah, at me? Or, right. like, do we need a fight? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I think I'll end this combo here. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming this to my was car. This beautiful. I loved this. Yeah, I hope, like, people I just, this. like, learned a little more. I don't know. I feel like if you do want to change or want to learn, like, you have to want to. Like, right. you can show this video or even 13 to somebody who doesn't want to change and it's not going to make a difference. And that's why I think, like, even how you talked about cancel culture, I think it is different for you because you were able to grow because you weren't racist. Right. But if you are, like, I think, like, you don't really want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Like, you just are kind of stuck in your ways. Like, you don't want to hear that maybe the things that you're doing and saying are directly hurting and affecting people, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, like, I don't know, you start fucking losing trust in a lot of things. Like mm -hmm. the government, and it's like you don't want to like know you're wrong. Yeah, but you gotta f 
look inward no, and better yeah. yourself. That's the only way this country will actually become better. Yeah, I, I, and it definitely does suck though because it's like we live here, like we want to believe our government, everything mm -hmm. is like for us, and it's definitely a hard realization to realize like oh shit, like they're not. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone has a different stage at when they realize it, but I think it's definitely an important point that black people don't ever get the opportunity to ignore it. Right. Like we don't have the chance to. Like yeah. it's always in our face and we see from jump like this shit is unfair like and i just wish some white people would realize that like we never get the opportunity to go into another space or escape from it and be like oh you know what it's it's not happening mm -hmm. because it's literally in our face right you know what's that but yeah this she's was... like a motivational speaker oh my god and she should that. create a youtube channel i know i should i'm just so like such a lazy bitch do you have anything you want to like plug oh yeah you guys i just made some soaps follow my in IG it's um she got me a CBD okay but I didn't make that oh, but. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but like, really cute really cute there's though. like my gum on the top of it <laughs> no, I just I realized like, I'm wait, like what is what that the fuck is <laughs> I stick my gum everywhere god damn <laughs> but no yeah you guys follow my IG out organic skincare by Marie love yes get your skin right your hair right hair oils too you make it all yes damn. natural organic go oh. Can buy it. I'll link everything in the description <laughs> and I'll put like petitions. Yes. What, what else can other people do right now to help? Petitions, support black businesses. No, I'm yeah, no, but yeah, for real. No, support black businesses. And I feel like really, even like sharing this video, mm -hmm. if you have any people in your life like that you feel like maybe you are uncomfortable talking to them about, like you can send a video. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not this one, like you can send videos. There's so many. Yeah. Or just have a conversation with anyone in your friends. Exactly. I feel like it really starts with like in your group like mm -hmm. you're not gonna go change in strangers minds right unless you are a motivational speaker like i think it really starts in your family with your friends like where it's the most awkward and uncomfortable right. basically and i think that's what's holding us all back and yeah like, once we can just everyone can just get the f out of oh this is uncomfortable like, yeah that is uncomfortable but, but like so many things how can you move forward if it is too uncomfortable and you realize you guys don't agree then you can realize like maybe that's not an energy you want around right you, which is better to know than to not know stop living in ignorance yes it's not bliss it's fucking not that's all i have for today yes thank you Love for you. fucking Subscribe, having me leave a like leave a comment let us know your thoughts all and your that. experiences and yeah to the loom. Hi, <laughs>